All right, John, thank you very much for being here today. Um, we're here to uh, talk about your painting, Odysseus. Um, it's often been a misconception that you're, a, that you're a, an oil painter. People get very often get confused, but that's not the case. You actually paint in a mixture of acrylic and sand. Yes. Uh, I used to do, use oil when I did portraiture, but I don't use oil at all anymore. And um, because I could do things with acrylic paint that I just can't, cannot do with oil paint. I don't think anybody can do with oil paint mm. because oil paint is a surface thing and it blends. It. When you work in oil, it's always blending. And even if it's not blending, it's layer on top of layer on top of layer, but they are separate layers. In the acrylic, it all becomes one layer. Can you tell us a little bit about um, the, you know, the, the process of which you create such depth and atmosphere in, in your work? Well, a lot of it has to do with the technical uh, qualities of the paint and the sand. Mixing the sand into the paint creates a textured surface. It's almost like, like large sandpaper, if you could use that term. Not quite as coarse, but uh, um, I mean, it really chews up brushes, but that's another matter altogether. Um, the, the actual layering of the paint, the different colors, it's always working wet paint on top of dry, wet paint on top of dry. And in doing that, there are layers and acrylic has a certain quality that even when you look at it up close, it almost, it almost looks like there are, that there are um, layers of it that, are, that have millimeters of depth, of course, which it doesn't have. And those different layers actually create an enormous sense of depth. So the, the final layer of the paint which sits on the surface, in fact, is what comes forward, and everything underneath that goes back, and, uh, um, and that creates an enormous sense of depth. John, with this painting, I was fascinated when I first came to it by the title Odysseus. So the journey that Odysseus traveled was the Odyssey, but you've chosen um, on this sort of se a, a seemingly absent or empty landscape to give it a personification. You've you've given the you know you've given a, a, a person a person's title to this landscape, um, and and that I suppose is a subject in a lot of your paintings because of um, the the presence of the presence of the human hand and and the evidence of of, of, of human civilization in your work. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about um, that, that, that presence that, that comes in this night sky? Well, in this case, I, when I started it off, I wanted to do the baobab tree in a very dark light um, because I wanted that to counter the sky. I just, it was, it was pure, purely the subject matter that I wanted to put into it. Then, 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 of course, the thing started germinating in my head about what it was that the picture was turning into. And because whenever I paint, any painting I paint, there's no definite idea of what I'm starting with because I don't want to be directed by, by that. I want my imagination to direct it. And in a case like this, it, it evolved. And the, the, the deep sky, looking deep into space, that is a very recent thing that people are doing. If you look at early photography or early films of night skies, you never saw anything like that. And people never looked at things like that. So, so it's only once the Hubble spacecraft got out there and all this that these images started appearing what deep space is. Now they use them in films where uh, um, it's all photoshopped in, in, in a lot of photography. You never know if the uh, photographer is actually seeing this or he isn't seeing it. And, and using that, I wanted to get deep into space because what was evolving was this idea of the ancient world of, uh, of, of the earth, something representing the ancient times, almost pre-human. The baobab was a personification of that, an ancient tree. They've been growing for thousands of years before people were there. And, um, and p placing it in this desolate country, uh, um, which is almost untouched by humans. But the sky says, this is us now. And, and then Odysseus came into it. Uh, uh, the idea that this is a very modern thing. Elon Musk, all these people are talking about it. We are going there. And, uh, um, and there we go, in the rocket. Now, when I painted the rocket, what I didn't realize was that misconceptions would come about that people thought it was a shooting star. A lot of people say it's a shooting star, but it's not a shooting star, it's a rocket. Because 
what I remember about the early shots of Cape Canaveral, uh, um, when I was a young man, watching the first launches of Cape Canaveral, as the rocket takes off, it goes, you see the rocket initially, but as, as it climbs, the rocket disappears, all you see is this ball of light leaving a trail as it goes, as it crackles, as it goes up in the sky. And, and there we go. We're going up to the stars. Did you spend a lot of time under this like glorious Cape sky looking at it? Well, I've, I've, I've done the best we can in the Cape here. Uh, um, I lay in the road in, in Scarborough. At the top, at the top road, where, you know, that's as far as from city lights as you can get. Uh, um, lay, laying in the middle of the road at one o'clock in the morning and looking at the sky, and you see an amazing amount. The longer you do, the more you can look into it. Mm. So, so it's really one gets transported. You go to Sutherland, you do the same thing. You know, get transported into the sky. But what you do with the sky, that becomes the artistic journey to go in there and to elaborate and to make more of it and tie it in with the concept that you have behind it.